If you're watching this video, you're probably in the market for a new table saw. And if you're like me, you've been putting the purchase off for years because it's a huge financial investment and there's tons of options out there. And you're probably getting by just fine with your current table saw setup like I was. This is my dad's old Craftsman three horsepower cast iron table saw. It's been the backbone of my woodworking business for a number of years and it served me well enough. But all good things must come to an end. And after a considerable amount of research, I ultimately decided to go with the Harvey brand, specifically the HW110S 36 inch four horsepower dovetail table saw. Harvey's constantly running flash sales on their website. So if you're interested, I would recommend just logging onto their website repeatedly, monitoring it, waiting for discount codes to be emailed to you. They have a pretty good marketing team. This screenshot was taken October 28th, 2023. So that's their current list price. When I bought this a couple months back, it was on sale. So I paid 2,463 plus 500 shipping and uh, tax. My total cost out of pocket was $3,162.54. There's a few reasons I bought this specific saw. Whenever I upgrade a tool, I try to stick with the minimal viable product as long as possible because of how frugal I am. I hate spending money on things. So when I buy a new tool or upgrade one, I don't wanna to have to do it again. So going from a low end tool to a mid range tool to a high end tool is just a waste of time and money and performance suffers. So when I buy, I start minimal viable product, a cheap tool. And then when I find my business requires it enough, I try to buy a higher end tool that I'll never need to repurchase. One of the big issues I had with my dad's old table saw was the angle wheel. I would crank that thing over to 45 and each time I did it, I felt like I was gonna snap off some internal component because around 35 degrees and more, it just got very difficult to turn. So I was excited and pleased to test out these high quality Harvey wheels. So here I'm prepping to put the cast iron wings on either side. You wanna do a really good job of cleaning this to remove any grease or debris that might be there. I've watched a couple videos on this and from what I've seen, most people will have to use a strip of painter's tape as a shim to get it perfectly level. So before even checking, I went ahead and added a, uh, a strip knowing that I would probably have to. This was something I wanted to get right the first time so my table would be fully tuned and I wouldn't have to come back and do this again. So I was really taking my time, making sure everything was lined up perfectly, using a high quality straight edge to make sure everything was flat. So a mistake that I made is I didn't fully crank down the bolts when I was testing it. I tightened them just enough, noticed it wasn't flat, so I went ahead and added a second strip but then realized it wasn't flat because I didn't fully torque down the three bolts underneath. So I think I had to remove that. Um, and I either had to use no tape or just one layer of it. So I didn't make that mistake on the other side. And I think I was good without any tape. So just make sure you're cranking those bolts down fully when you're checking your flatness. It sounds like a common sense thing, but just do full torque because it does make a difference. I must say, I was a little bit disappointed in the paper instructions that were included with the saw. They lacked a lot of detail in terms of like even the specific bolts you were supposed to use. So I had to double check by watching some other videos to make sure I was using the right bolt. It seems like a shortcut Harvey took with these instructions and it's so avoidable, you know, just include good instructions, everything should be labeled. I should know which nuts and bolts to use for each piece. I shouldn't have to rely on other people's videos on YouTube. But you know, if you're spending this much money on a tool like this, you're smart enough to figure it out. So it's not that big of a deal. Here I'm getting ready to attach the blade so I can begin truly calibrating the table saw. I've watched tons of videos on this. I've never actually calibrated a table saw to this degree just because it seemed a bit frivolous with the old table saw I had before, but certainly something I wanted to do correctly the first time and never have to worry about again. You will need to put a little bit of Loctite on these leveling screws so they don't vibrate out. Here you can see how the blade is calibrated out of the box. Pretty good. 
I built this very simple jig to test to ensure that the blade is perfectly parallel with the miter slots. It was just some scrap wood and I super glued a nail. I was using the very tip of the nail to test and out of the box, everything was perfect. Did not have to adjust at all. So now I'm working on getting the fence fine tuned to ensure that the fence is parallel with the miter slots. Now I have to issue a major warning here. When you're first messing around with your fence, you're gonna be tempted to just throw it on there and start sliding it around because you're gonna be super excited. You have a high quality fence. However, you must be very careful. There's a free floating piece of metal in there and if it's not out of the way, it's gonna dig into the rail and you're gonna go to slide it and it's gonna scratch the paint job, which you'll hear happen right now. One of the YouTube videos I watched about this table saw, there was a guy that did the exact same thing and he warned his viewers not to do it. So I even knew this going into it and I still allowed it to happen. And there it is, the award for my stupidity. Here's that piece of metal that free floats in there. You gotta be careful when you put it down because it gets caught up in that position and that's when it scratches. I'm using the same simple jig to fine tune the fence alignment to ensure it's perfectly parallel with the miter slots. Another reason I bought this saw was because it came standard with overhead dust collection and it had some deliberate design features inside the cabinet for dust collection. You can see it has a dedicated tube that goes up and ports directly underneath the saw blade. This is the standard dust hood that just snaps right in as a robbing knife. It has a quick release, so it's pretty easy to get in there and you have the ability to fine tune how tight it is in there. So if you're having trouble snapping it in, you can always loosen up the settings. The saw also comes with a really nice miter gauge. Doing my first test cuts here, I really wanted to see two things. One, the performance of the saw blade that came with the saw and how many saw marks it left on it, if any. And then two, what the dust collection performance would be without the overhead dust collection and just the under the saw. You can see here, there's absolutely no saw marks in it. I was very impressed with that. Big improvement from my old uh, Craftsman table saw. I was getting a lot of dust shooting out the top, so I decided to throw on the overhead dust collection and keep working on the cuts. Even with the overhead dust collection, there was still a considerable amount of dust that escaped you can see here how much is actually left on the saw and my shirt was absolutely covered. I was very disappointed with the performance of the dust collection here. Just after those few cuts, you can see how much collected in the bottom of the saw as well. Here's another example of how good the blade quality is and how finely tuned this machine is. Two and a half inch thick black walnut. Looks like it's sanded to 320 fresh off the saw. Here's another example of why you need to just manage your expectations when it comes to dust collection for a table saw. This isn't a knock on Harvey at all. I don't know how they could have done a better job. It seems like they've thought of all the variables they could and tried the solution for it with the overhead dust collection on the blade. They have the direct hose right up to the bottom of the blade. They have an adjustable fin that redirects airflow as much as possible to the bottom of the blade. I don't know what the answer is. This is just my only experience with a higher end table saw with dedicated dust collection. So 
I'd love to hear in the comments if you have a different brand table saw that has different dust collection and what your experiences have been. I'm convinced that it just is what it is. Dust is always gonna escape, it's always gonna fly out. There's no perfect solution. If there is, I'd love to see it and I'd love to experience it because from what I've experienced here, you're just gonna get covered in dust. Don't get me wrong, it's way better than what I had before with the old Craftsman saw, which was zero dust collection. It would all fly out the top and just fall out the bottom. So this is still way better. But when you compare it to other tools like a joiner, a planer, bandsaw, um, this is still gonna produce a lot of dust on your person and in your shop. There's quite a few things about this table saw that I really like and I'm very, very impressed with. I wanna use it for a couple months. Um, I have some planned add-ons. I'm gonna get the sliding table attachment. I'd like to get the router system and I plan on doing full install and reviews on both of those. I wanna use the whole system for a couple months, you know, run a couple dozen projects through them and then do a final review on the whole table saw system to give my two cents. But so far I am very impressed and I'm very happy I made the purchase. I wish that I did it years ago. I haven't given up on the dust collection issue either. I've done some experimenting where I detach the hose that runs from the bottom of the cabinet up to the bottom of the blade. I figured if I just take that out altogether and it's just pulling air from the bottom, it will uh, pull in a lot of that residual sawdust that just sits in the bottom of the cabinet. I also took some foam and shoved it in all the gaps around the perimeter um, in the space between where the cabinet connects to the bottom of the cast iron top. That made a big difference in the amount of suction directly to the blade. After I get the sliding table attachment and the router system on the right side, I plan on redoing my entire shop to truly make this Harvey table saw system, the centerpiece of my shop. I'm gonna redo dust collection, redo my automated blast gates, redo the setup on the entire right side of my shop based on this table saw. So if you're interested in seeing how I do that, consider subscribing and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.